Despite the fact that this is part two in the series, we're going to talk now about the actual beginning of the project, because the original idea wasn't exactly to make this. Years ago, I had the idea to take a two-dimensional contour map and bring it back into three dimensions and wrap it around the outside of a box. And it's been so long now that I don't remember what the actual spark for that idea was, but it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. So one of the things that was holding me back from doing it was I didn't have a CNC machine big enough to do it easily. And I would have to work around a smaller machine. Uh, it's been about two years since I built the larger machine that you can see over in the other room. So I don't have that excuse anymore. So part of what's held me back is the technical aspect of it. I didn't know whether I could pull off this glue up. Uh, if you're carving into this, then you're exposing everything that's going on inside of here and so it needs to be basically perfect all the way around. But beyond that, there's the artistic side of it, too. Uh, what is this contour map supposed to look like? Uh, how much detail should there be in it? How do you even get started with that? And it's just the blank page syndrome. So earlier this year, I came across this video on a Japanese water marbling technique, Suminagashi. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, Water marbling is something that I've been exposed to in the past, but this technique, you end up with a result that looks exactly like a contour map. So it struck me that this is the solution for how to get started. I decided to make my marbling full size, which was 60 by 10 inches. I ended up with more detail than I could use, so it probably would have been just as well or better to make it smaller and then scale it up. I needed a shallow pan of water, slightly larger than that, the melamine top of my assembly table was getting pretty beat up, so I decided to replace that and use the old one to make the pan. There are different techniques for water marbling. In some, you modify the water so that the ink or paint will float on the surface. In Suminagashi, you use a special ink that floats on untreated water. For the spaces in between the ink lines, you use a surfactant, in this case, ox gall. All you do is get the ink and the ox gall on a brush and just touch the surface of the water with the tip of the brush, alternating between the two. What's great about this process is that you have really limited control over what happens. That's fantastic when you don't really know what it is you're trying to create. It's almost certainly not going to make as beautiful of a design as a good artist perfectly executing their vision. But if we don't have a vision, or a good artist for that matter, this is at least going to create something that looks natural. We're just setting things in motion and letting physics take over. The tricky part became how to transfer the ink onto the plywood. Normally you would be using paper and just kind of roll it onto the surface. I can't do that with plywood and I don't have paper that's big enough. So my first attempt was to just kind of push it all down at once. That was a total failure. I got maybe 10% of the design transferred. My second attempt, I tried to get as close to rolling it onto the surface as I could. And that worked a lot better. I decided to make one more attempt. I switched from the red ink to the blue, and I'm really glad that I did because the blue ink was working a lot better. So here's a funny story about water marbling. When I was in high school, one year in math class, we had a student teacher for a while. On our first day, she had us doing water marbling. After class, my best friend at the time said, she's just trying to make us like her. And I said, well, it worked. He said something to the effect of that it would be more appropriate for a lower level class. We were there to learn, and all she needed to do was just come in and do a good job teaching, and we would have respected her. Now here it is, <coughs> years later, and I'm using water marbling for my job, and he's a math teacher.
the third transfer wasn't perfect. Uh, there were some trapped air bubbles in there. So in some places, they're just a kind of a blurry mess instead of the design, but I call that good enough. And it was a little bit of a challenge getting the water out of the pan. So then I had to get from this ink pattern to an actual contour map. Basically, I just picked a line somewhere and started following it as best as I could. There were places where the line got sort of too twisted around itself uh, and it was just impossible to find it. And then you also have these missing areas that I had to work around. So there was a lot of interpretation involved. If I started over even using the same pattern, I would end up with something fairly different. Once I had my four layers worked out, I printed out a colored version to use as a reference. 